then that's an attitude of faith. That's what allows God to show out in your life. The enemies that you see today, you will see them no more. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I'm, I'm tired of doing what I used to do. If I always do what I've always done, I'll always be where I've always been. I'm going to throw it behind me. Truth of the matter is everybody in here is going through a change. You don't have to be ashamed of yours. We are all in the process of transforming to a higher, better expression of myself. Don't let the habits of my past stop me from this metamorphosis. Things that used to worry me, <laughs> not gonna do me like that. People I had to respond to in anger, not gonna do me like that. I'm focusing on what's in front of me. This is my time. It's never too late to begin again. No matter what has happened to you in your life, no matter what you've done or what's been done to you, it is never too late to press into a new beginning. Your future has no room for your past. Letting go of what lies behind. We've all got a past. Thank God we've all got a future. Don't you believe that lie that it's too late for you? Refuse to be trapped in the past. You can have better health. You can have self-respect. You can have your financial needs met. You can start heading in the right direction by having a brand new attitude toward life. You're hurting yourself if you're living an isolated, lonely life and living in fear of ever being involved with anybody. But you know, you really only have two choices. You can live your life disappointed or you can have a new beginning. That's our only option. Live your life disappointed, keep living in the past and letting the devil make you miserable or shake that stuff off yourself and say, I'm going to begin again. I'm going to have a fresh attitude and a fresh start. I'm getting off my grave clothes. I will rejoice and be glad. It's easy to get bitter, hold a grudge, lose your passion. Kiss the person that left you goodbye. Kiss the dream that didn't work out goodbye. God wouldn't have allowed it to happen if he didn't have something better up in front of you. There are people and opportunities that were ordained for your past that are not ordained for your future. They were right for a season, but that season can come to an end. The key is how we handle the closed doors, how you handle the people that treated you wrong. Sometimes instead of kissing them goodbye, we smack them goodbye. Are you at peace with your past or are you bitter over the loss? Holding a grudge because that person walked away. It's time to kiss some things goodbye. Don't bring self-pity, a chip on your shoulder. That was in your past. It doesn't belong in the future. You cannot embrace the new things God has in store as long as you're holding on to the old. Every time you say, I am free, I will not be controlled by this addiction, by this anger. You are moving toward freedom, breakthroughs, wholeness. It may not have happened yet. See, words are like seeds. When we speak something out, they take root. They begin to grow. But eventually, you're going to become what you're saying. Vision comes from your head. Word is spoken out of your mouth, which is in your head. The word was scarce. The vision was dim. Are you so busy managing your feelings and the feeling the people around you that you're not making progress in life because you are leading with your heart and not with your head? You can't cry your way out. You can't fuss your way out. The definition of lunacy is to keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So why are you doing what doesn't work? If giving him a piece of your mind hadn't worked in the first 15 years, wouldn't it be a good time now to change strategies? Why are we loyal to ineffectiveness? We visit effectiveness for the weekend on a Sunday in a motivational message and a special television show. We love to visit it, but we are married to habits that are ineffective and we are loyal to things that we know don't work, but because this is how I feel. Take unto you the helmet of salvation. 
So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies. And changing your strategy means reinventing your life, recreating you. And you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. You have the power to make that decision. You can decide I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. The other thing is about life, when things happen to you, when you permit things to use you, you can't change the past, but you can interpret. You can reinterpret how you see it. For years, I was going around with a heavy load on my shoulders, feeling bad because I was adopted. You weren't given away less, you were chosen with love. Same circumstances, same event, but reinterpreted. An interpretation that empowers me. Am I making sense to you? So when you begin to look at your past, give an interpretation that empowers you. That's where I used to be. That's not where I am now. I'm growing. To consistently take advantage of the opportunity that you've created, to be aware, to face life with your eyes and ears open to the possibilities that may be just around the corner. An enterprising person is one who sees opportunity in all areas of life. To be enterprising is to keep your eyes open and your mind active. It's to be skilled enough and confident enough, disciplined enough, to seize opportunities that present themselves. And self-enterprising people aren't lazy. They don't wait for opportunities to come to them. They go after the opportunities. Self-enterprise means always finding a way to keep yourself actively working toward your ambition. Creativity to see what's out there and shape it to your advantage. Creativity to look at the world a little differently. Creativity to be different. And what goes hand in hand with the creativity of self-enterprise? The courage to be creative. The courage to see things differently. And the courage to go against the crowd. The courage to take a different approach. The courage to stand alone if you have to. Understanding your self-worth. How valuable you are. What could you do if you had all the skills, took the classes, read the books? What could you do? What true value could you develop? How valuable could I become? Am I valuable enough to work on what's not working so I can reach my full capacity? Once you start understanding how valuable you are, it's a whole new experience. It plays a major role in our ability to be self-enterprising. If we don't feel good about ourselves, we won't feel good about our lives. And if we don't feel good about our lives, we won't be very interested in looking for opportunities. Separate what you do from who you are. That's what the guilt trap is about. All of us have done some things that if we had them to do over again, we wouldn't do it again. A lot of things that if I had it to do over again, if I knew then what I know now, I would have done it differently. Well, it didn't happen that way. And that's what you call life. I didn't do it like that. That's what I did then. Won't do it today, so you are picking on an innocent man. What are the things that you must overcome? What qualities about your personality you know that you're going to have to change because those particular characteristics are liabilities to you? What are your assets? What are your strong points? Look at and evaluating yourself to make that determination. Find some trusted critics. People that you know care about you and love you. We take it personal when someone wants to give us some feedback on where we are falling short and tell us about our blind spots. We want to have everything being positive about us. We're not perfect. Get a support group, somebody that you can talk to, people who perhaps might have a similar problem, that you can share some of the challenges that you're going through. And it might be a situation where one person can give you an idea of how they handle that situation and create an opening for you. Begin to stimulate some possibilities in your mind on how you can resolve the problem. We can't grow by ourselves. As I mentioned before, we grow from people and projects. So you see, being self-enterprising doesn't just relate to the ability to make money. Being self-enterprising also means feeling good enough about yourself, having a great enough self-worth. Enterprise is always better than ease. Every time we choose to do less than we possibly can, it affects our self-confidence, our self-worth. If we keep doing a little less every day, a little less, a little less, 
We are also being a little less. Doing less could ruin your life. Now you can reverse the process of doing a little less by using your self-direction, your self-reliance, your self-discipline. You alter the course by doing a little more each day. And pretty soon you'll develop a new habit of doing rather than neglecting. And days and weeks and months of doing a little more, it'll increase your confidence and your creativity and your self-worth. In the end, it's how we feel about ourselves that provides us with the increased courage and creativity for self-enterprise. It's not what we get or what we accumulate that makes us valuable. It's what we become that makes us valuable. Success isn't in the having. Success is in the doing. It's the process of doing that brings value. It's the activity that transforms our dreams into reality that converts ideas into actuality. Out on, that can extend throughout a lifetime because most of us are scared and we choose to lead an easy life. We choose to take the safe path. And by doing so, we start to rack up those regrets. But there is a solution. You have to be willing to be bold. Bad decisions, hasty decisions, too fast. And affects the next 20 years of your life. Because you made the wrong decision. If you'd have just waited, got all your information together, settled yourself, you'd have been better. What makes us make these fast decisions? Fear? It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. And that's what discipline is. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road to do what's right. And regret, in and of itself, it's worthless. So... Learn and move on. True desire in the heart, whatever it is you want to do, work hard to get it. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself wherever it is, and you become that. You become that and give yourself no way. The scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. To absorb, let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. The experiences you have, the good ones, the bad ones, the highs and the lows. Part of the gift you can give to others is the gift of your experience, if you remember. If it's vivid, if it's powerful, if it's fresh, if it's unique, if it's vital. You can really affect other people with the relation of your own, relating your own experience. It's just because we're too lazy to live the experience and then reflect on it. Live another week and reflect on it. Take a half a day at the end of the month, reflecting over the month. What were the numbers? Some weren't good, some were good. The books you read the books you heard about, relating your experiences at the end of the month. At the end of the year, take a weekend. Take some time reflecting. Goals are major to a genuinely success-oriented person. Without them, you're just playing around. The difference between a goal-directed individual and someone without goals is like the difference between a Wimbledon champion and a kid batting a tennis ball around on a court with no net, no opponent to bring out the best in him, and no way of keeping score. Despite everything that's been written about the importance of goal setting, very few people actually put it into practice. It's always amazed me the way the average guy puts more thought and effort into planning his two-week vacation than he devotes to planning his life. What's he taking a vacation from? He hasn't really decided what he's trying to do in life, but for two weeks out of the year, he just decides he wants to do something else. And this is what he plans very carefully. Challenge creates strong character, and goals represent challenge in its most positive form. Leaders have their personal goals clearly in focus as well as the goals of the organization. In fact, one of the principal responsibilities of leadership is defining goals for the vast majority of people who aren't able to do it for themselves. 
Be the best. Lifelong personal development and the commitment to personal excellence requires tremendous dedication, discipline, and willpower. It is often the case that we know what we need to do, but we lack the courage to take the risks that accompany trying anything new. Instead, we make excuses for inaction. The great thing about excuses is that no matter what happens, excuses are always there waiting to be used. Anybody can have an excuse for absolutely anything, but the downside of excuses is that nobody really believes them. If you make excuses, they're going to know it and they're going to think less of you. But if you refuse to rely on excuses, people are going to know that too and they'll admire you for it. You need large amounts of self-discipline to deal courageously with all the fear-inducing events of your life. Courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it, all others depend. Often, fear is necessary to preserve life, prevent injury, and guard against financial mistakes. As you might imagine, I don't think we should spend a lot of time regretting the choices we've made in the past. To spend time brooding over how things went, that's an illusion. What you're doing is suffering pointlessly in the present under the shadow of certain memories. You're telling yourself a story about something that might have been over and over again. How long do you want to do that for? And sometimes life is going to knock you down. But because you have been knocked down, don't mean that you finish. No, you knocked down, but not knocked out. No. You got some reasons. It might be your own sense of, of pride and determination and the kind of life that you want to create. So if everyone is afraid, what is the difference between the brave person and the coward? The brave person disciplines himself to confront, deal with, and act in spite of the fear. In contrast, the coward allows himself to be dominated and controlled by the fear. The difference between the hero and the coward is that the hero sticks in there five minutes longer. No one is born with fears. Fears can therefore be unlearned by practicing self-discipline repeatedly with regard to fear until it goes away. The most common fears that we experience, which often sabotage all hopes for success, are the fears of failure, poverty, and loss of money. These fears cause people to avoid risk of any kind and to reject opportunity when it's presented to them. Over the years, I've developed some ideas about effective goal setting and I'd like to share those with you in a moment. When I was a kid, I used to dream what it would be like to buy a ticket on a railroad train and just go someplace. I really didn't think about where I'd be going or how long it would take to get there. I just loved the idea of getting on the train and just letting it take me someplace. I guess there's still something appealing about that idea but it's not really the way you want to live your life as a mature human being. When you grow up, you buy a ticket on a train or a plane because you want to go someplace and you know exactly where you're going. You may have to change planes in a different city, your flight may be canceled, and you may have to switch to another flight. You may not feel like talking to the person seated next to you, but you will persist. You know where you're headed, and you're quite determined to get there. That's goal-directed behavior in its simplest form. There are short-term goals and long-term goals. Long-term goals are the equivalent of a major journey. When you reach the point where you've achieved your long-term goals, your life will be fundamentally changed, and the process of getting to that point will transform you into a stronger, wiser, higher-performing person than you are now. How can you identify your long-term goals? On a sheet of paper or in a notebook, write these five headings. Number one, what do I want to do? Number two, what do I want to be? Number three, what do I want to see? Number four, what do I want to have? And number five, where do I want to go? Now, under each of these categories, write down several possible long-term goals. Be very relaxed about this. Just allow your mind to flow and come up with three to six ideas for each category. Don't worry about a lot of details at this point and don't spend too much time describing 
a particular goal. In category number one, for example, what do I want to do? Suppose you want to write a book about the history of your family, going back to the arrival of your great-grandparents in the United States. Just quickly jot down family history. Then as you look down the list of categories, it occurs to you that you've always wanted to see the pyramids in Egypt. So you write pyramids. Keep writing down ideas as long as the list of categories continues to inspire you. You'll probably be surprised at some of the things that turn up. You may have kept a great many desires and aspirations hidden in the back of your mind, but the opportunity to write them down will move them to the forefront of your consciousness. That's one of the benefits of this technique. When you're satisfied with your list of long-term goals, read through the list once again. Then, beside each item, write the number of years that you believe it will take you to achieve that particular goal. For example, you may estimate that it will take you 10 years to research and write the book on your family history. But you'll need only five years to get yourself into a position where you can take a trip to the pyramids. Create a time frame like this for every one of your long-term goals. Immediate goals, those that will take less than a year to achieve, are important too, of course, and we'll deal with those separately in a moment. When you're finished entering your time frames, there should be a fairly balanced distribution of all your goals. If there are many one and three year objectives, but only a few in the 10 year category, maybe you need to think more about what you really want your life to add up to. What kind of life you really want to build over the long run. But if there's a preponderance of 10 year goals and relatively few of the shorter term variety, this may be an indication that you're putting things off, that you're focused too much on where you'll be at the end of the day and not enough on what you can accomplish right now. Keep working on your list, adding and subtracting goals with various time frames until you've created a more or less even distribution. How many times have you had a great idea, didn't do anything about it, and then a year later someone did something about it, made a lot of money, got the promotion, etc. So when you have the idea, the inspiration to act, it's time. Act. And you don't have to know it perfectly. You know, you can drive from here to California, wherever you might be, assuming you're not in Hawaii, by going west. And what happens is that you don't have to see the whole route. You only need to see 200 yards ahead of you. At night, you can drive just with your headlights, and the headlights keep moving with you. And your goal in life is to, like, get in the game. You don't have to see the whole blueprint. You just have to see the next steps, the next steps, the next steps. And if you keep taking the next steps, eventually you get to where you want to go. Does that make sense? We believe that when you are vibrating at the level of 100% expectancy that you're going to get something, it's already a done deal. You know, piece of cake, no, no big deal. We're going to win this thing. We're going to get that contract. You know, I'm going to make this thing happen. And what happens is the universe literally responds. Sometimes when you're doing this, you're putting on it the vision of this should happen by this date. It's okay to set goals like that, but sometimes it takes a week longer, a year longer, whatever. But law of attraction says if you'll just hold the expectancy, like attracts like. If you say, I want to be a millionaire, but I don't know anyone that would ever teach me how to do that. Or I want to buy a car, but I don't have any money. Then what you're doing is saying, it's like calling up Domino's Pizza and saying, send me a pizza. And calling them up a minute later and saying, never mind. It's like, you know, you've got to create the space mentally to hold this vision that you've got. And that requires expectation and then knowing that the perfect thing is on its way. You should always make decisions with your heart and soul. You can use your brain for math. You can use your brain to look at the fine print in a contract. But when it comes to the actual feel of the decision, you always want to go inward and check it against your heart and soul. Here's the simple test. Does the decision that you're about to make expand you, expand your future, or expand the possibilities of your life? If the answer is yes, then the decision is yes, no matter how terrifying it is. Here are some action exercises that you can do. Make a decision today to invest in yourself and getting better, as if your future depends on it, because it does. Identify the most important skills you have that determine the quality and quantity of results you get at your work and make a plan to get better in each one. 
Set excellent performance in your work as a goal, and then determine exactly what you will need to do every day to join the top 20% or better in your field. Look ahead three to five years and determine the new knowledge and skills you will need in order to lead your field in the future. Then start acquiring them today. If you could wave a magic wand and become absolutely excellent, which one skill would have the greatest impact on your earning ability? Whatever your answer, set that skill as a goal, make a plan, and work on it every day. Commit yourself today to lifelong learning and never let a day go by without getting better in some area. Now comes the really challenging and interesting part. So far, you've just been adding things to the list, but now it's time to start making some selections. Now you're going to start asking yourself what's really important compared to what might just be sort of fun. Choose four goals from each of the four time frames, one year, three year, five year, and 10 year. Now you have 16 separate goals. So far, you've only referred to them in shorthand fashion, but now you're going to start start seeing them very, very clearly in your mind's eye. You're going to see each goal just as if it were being realized this very minute. And you're going to write down a detailed description of exactly what you see. Do you intend to open a handmade furniture store in three years? What will the store look like from the street out front? Will there be gold leaf lettering on the windows? Or will there be a sign hanging over the door instead? How many square feet will the store contain? Will there be a showroom area for the furniture in front and a workspace in back? Or will the furniture be built at a different location? Do you intend to have any employees or will you run the business entirely by yourself? Think of all the questions that need to be answered in order to see your goal with absolute clarity. Review what you've written at times and keep track of your progress toward these objectives. Above all, persevere. Goal setting is a very important first step, but goal achievement is a continuous, lifelong process. That's what makes it so challenging. That's also why it's so extremely rewarding to finally attain your long-term goals. With regard to immediate goals, those that require anywhere from a day to a year to achieve, I recommend creating lots of objectives that can be accomplished in a month or less. Write them down. Read what you've written at frequent intervals. Keep track of your progress. And do something often that brings you closer to realizing these very short-term objectives. That way you'll always have something to celebrate. These goals are not only important in their own right, they're also confidence builders and motivators toward a lifestyle based on perseverance and achievement.